Ukrainian drones are becoming a bigger threat to Russian tanks. Russians are helpless against UAVs. The Special Design Bureau of Machine Building of Russia is working in three areas to protect infantry fighting vehicles and airborne assault vehicles against drones, including active protection, the company told. We are dealing during the last two years exactly with protection of vehicles from small-sized, unmanned aerial vehicles, including FPV drones and conventional drones. There are three main areas of work. Suppression by electronic warfare, protecting structures and physical destruction of drones at a certain distance. Certain efforts are underway in all the three directions. We cannot be more specific, but the list of activities is extensive from anti-drone canopies to active protection, the company said. The staggering loss of Russian equipment alludes to evolving drone tactics, the proliferation of kamikaze drones, and an uptick in the use of first-person view drones by the Ukrainian forces. The attack drones are simple, commercially available. Off-the-shelf UAVs retrofitted with warheads or explosives from rocket-propelled grenade rounds to be flown into targets. Nearly all of these kamikaze attack drones are controlled via virtual reality screens strapped over the operator's eyes and forehead for better control since the feed is seen from the drone's perspective. More than two-thirds of the Russian tanks that Ukraine's military has destroyed in recent months have been knocked out using FPVs. On the other hand, the menace of kamikaze drones is also equally alarming for Ukraine since Russian UAVs have knocked out some of the best Western armor in Ukraine's arsenal, including the German Leopard 2 and the US Abrams MBTs. A Ukrainian commander recently warned that the Abrams needs more protection to survive. For more than 100 years, the tank has been the apex predator on the battlefield. But their position of dominance is now under threat as technological advances are turning drones into tank killers. Although many experts believe that electronic warfare is the most effective way to counter drones deployed as guided warheads, both Russian and Ukrainian forces are still experimenting with other novel solutions. US and Europe will have a very, very big Russia problem, NATO commander warns. The US and Europe will have a very, very big Russia problem, regardless of how the war in Ukraine ends, the Supreme Allied Commander for NATO warned on July the 18th. Speaking at the Aspen Security Forum in Aspen, Colorado, US, General Christopher Cavoli said even a Ukrainian victory would only be the beginning of Western attempts to contain Russian aggression. The outcome on the ground is terribly, terribly important, but we can't be under any illusions. At the end of a conflict in Ukraine, however it concludes, we are going to have a very, very big Russia problem, he said in comments reported by Voice of America. We are going to have a situation where Russia is reconstituting its force, is located on the borders of NATO, is led by largely the same people as it is right now, is convinced that we're the adversary and is very, very angry. Speaking at the same event, the foreign and security policy advisor to German Chancellor Olaf Scholz gave another grim assessment, saying that, by the choice of Vladimir Putin, we are entering a phase of a long, drawn-out conflict with Russia. Its bloodiest manifestation at the moment is the war in Ukraine. But obviously, it's not the only one, Jens Plotner said. We have seen hybrid activity across Europe. We have seen hybrid activity in the United States. We have seen Russia reaching out to Africa. We have seen Russia rekindling ties with Tehran or even worse, Pyongyang. So I think all of this is part of the bigger picture which we need to acknowledge. The warnings come as concerns over the long-term commitment of the US to Ukraine continue to mount. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg told the BBC that NATO allies must prepare for the worst-case scenario of a decade-long war in Ukraine. The main message is that the stronger the support for Ukraine and the longer we are willing to commit, the sooner this war can end, Stoltenberg told the BBC. The paradox is that now Russian President Putin believes that he can wait us out, so therefore the war continues. Stoltenberg, whose term as Secretary General ends in October, has consistently urged NATO allies to increase defense spending amid risks of fracturing among the alliance. Multiple NATO countries, including Slovakia and Hungary, have questioned NATO's commitment to supporting Ukraine in the war, calling instead for a peace agreement.